Tonight on the playlist, homegrown original music, the Sparta Sound Studio and dance innovator Max Pollock live in the studio. Stay tuned for a playlist first. Funding for the playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. He combines classic tap with the rhythms of Africa, Brazil, and Cuba. Tonight, Max Pollock shares the wide world of dance on the tiny playlist stage. Prepare for a journey from the familiar to spontaneous surprise. Please welcome Max Pollock, accompanied by Beth Kaczynski on the piano. Ooh, very cool. That is just awesome. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. I brought you water. You. <laughs> you have just inspired just a whole bunch of dancers who've been thinking about wanting to be, and look what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. It's a um, pleasure. So you're here um, to dance with the DSSO this weekend. That's correct, yeah. Um, but you are originally from Austria. Yes. So I was going to tease you a little bit about dancing to the Sound of Music Go soundtrack. Right ahead. People do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but you said that's not necessarily um, really common and really popular. But how did you get started dancing in Austria? Um, via television. 
I saw Fred Astaire on television when I was five years old because Austrian public television uh, used to broadcast old American movie musicals on a somewhat regular basis. And uh, the first time I caught one of those movies, I can't remember which one it was exactly, but it just struck me and I said, Mom, I want to do that. Mom, Dad, you know, <laughs> I need to try that. It just seemed so fascinating. And I realize now it must also have been the combination of the music, you know, the incredible jazz arrangements and stuff like that of these movies together with, of course, Fred Astaire's brilliance. You know. And you were a drummer in there, too, somewhere. I started drumming after I started tap dancing, but almost immediately after, like, a, like two years after or something like that. Yeah. So jazz drumming and, and percussion has always been a uh, passion of mine. So it's the same thing. You're percussing with your feet or you're percussing with your hands or with sticks. It's all really one thing. Okay. Well, your next thing that you agreed to do with us is a, is a improv mm -hmm. uh, with a local saxophone player, right, um, yeah. Dave Frankenfeld, yeah. and this is, you guys have just met, I mean, That's truly. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Also, Beth and I have just met, so this is a very fresh thing <laughs> as of today. <laughs> yeah. But well. uh, that's what we enjoy doing being spontaneous and meeting people through music. Well, you do a beautiful job, and thank you truly for, for going out on a limb. Thank you. And uh, giving us a chance to see what you do. Absolutely. So I'll talk to you a little bit more, yeah. but enjoy. <laughs> well done. That, that is fantastic. Just fantastic. And it is an international language. Thank you. Just awesome. Way to go, Dave. Very cool. Now, we talked a little bit about that international language, and, and yeah. you have um, a gift for bringing in the rhythms of Cuba and the ry rhythms of Brazil and, and the rhythms that you grew up with in 20 years in New York City, you know? Yeah, essentially the 20 years in New York City are the reason why I ended up doing uh, 
world music, let's say. In the beginning, when I came to New York, I was really just interested in jazz and jazz tap dancing. But when you're in New York, you very quickly realize that there's much more than the one great thing that you were originally there to research or experience. And you can't walk on the street any given day, on any given day, without encountering at least two different performers of some sort on the subway system, on the street corner, or somebody just humming something who might be from, you know, uh, Pakistan or somewhere, you know. So uh, that aspect of New York uh, gave me the idea or the inspiration to just branch out and look for different kinds of music, and I'm very glad I did. And so tell me a little bit about Rumba Tap. Th this uh -huh. is your own creation. Rumba Tap is, yeah, it's, it's something that I developed over a period of about 15 years. Uh, at first studying uh, jazz drumming, then Afro-Cuban percussion on the drum set and then on the traditional instruments, the, the religious drums, the bata drums, uh, the congas, the bongo, the timbales, the, uh, all the sort of typical Latin American instruments, I had to start understanding how they worked. And I wanted to start playing Cuban music with my feet. And uh, one of the uh, key th elements in Cuban music is the rhythmic key called the clave. And that's something that's, it's very simple, but in order to really play the music, you have to get it deep inside you, under your skin, into your system, and that's not easy. That takes a little while. But I'm glad I took the time, because it took me a couple of years to, to really be, uh, incorporate it into my style. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of work, a lot of practicing, but I'm very happy with well, it now. Yeah. I'm tickled that you're here and sharing you. your gift with us. And I know you have one more piece where I feel like we're making you work really hard. Oh, no, but that's cool. We do I love doing it. Well, I, it shows. Thanks. And it, it is definitely an artistic expression. So thank, thank you. you so much. So your last piece, you're just improv, just you. I'm going to do just sort of the, the essence of Rumba Tap. By the way, my website is rumbatap.com. And uh, you can see more videos of me performing and my group. And uh, I just do a couple of spiritual piece uh, songs and typical rhythms from Cuba and together with my improvisation okay that's what Rumba Tap is all about all right you can show us show us what you're up to thank you <laughs> you're welcome thank, thank you, you. Sire, sire, oh de mata, ore, ore. Sire, sire. O de mata, ore, ore. Yambele que y lodo, o de mata, golona. Yambele que y lodo, o de mata, golona. Sire, sire.
esa negra linda que me echó bilongo kikiribu mandinga kikiribu mandinga kikiribu mandinga kikiribu mandinga Max performs this weekend with the Duluth Superior Symphony Orchestra. The show starts at 8 in the Duluth Auditorium Saturday night. On Sunday, he'll be with the DSSO in Grand Rapids, performing at the Rife Center there. The music starts at 2. And we'll be back right after this. We are at the 2-1-A bar in Virginia. We started with Matt Ray having him play, and the aroma, it just blew up from there. Uh, my name is Matthew Ray, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the Iron Range Original Music Association, uh, which is known as IROMA. And what we are is a nonprofit organization here on the Iron Range uh, that is dedicated to promoting and advocating original music. My name is Carly Gobatz, and we have the IROMA Spring Showcase. We're kind of breaking it up so that on Friday we have a solo acoustic acts, um, kind of a singer-songwriter type thing. And we have five bands on Saturday night from 8 to 1, and it's all Iron Range local original music. I think that's what's, what impresses people the most, is when they, they walk out of there realizing that, you know, these people are my neighbors, I don't even know they existed, and here they are in a band, and, and the band's really good, and they're writing uh, all kinds of, of good music that, that's unique and interesting. And there are so many great artists up here, and it just gives a spot to put to bring them all together and showcase original music on the Iron Range and educate people that there are tons of great artists up here. Original homegrown music is a big part of northeastern Minnesota with Iroma on the Iron Range and active music scenes in Cook County and in Duluth. Local musicians have more ways than ever to use their voice and we have more ways to hear them. Tonight Duluth Mayor Don Ness shares his perspective on the homegrown music festival now in its 13th year. Welcome to the playlist. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so 160 plus bands, 24 venues, more. Well, how big a deal is that in a city the size of Duluth? Well, I think it, it, it speaks of what Duluth has to offer, you know, and, and it's not only the incredible musical talent that we have in Duluth, but that we are a community, we are a city that attracts this sort of talent, and that these are folks that live uh, in Duluth, they play at the, our local venues, and Homegrown is a, is a chance to bring everybody together, one big celebration. And of course, we have to give credit to, to Scott Lunt, uh, who started 13 years ago on his birthday. Uh, and uh, that was the seed that has grown into this wonderful festival. Um, that's a lot of music to take in in eight days, though. So how do you start? How do you navigate that schedule? Well, one band at a time. Uh, you know, it, it, the nice thing about Homegrown is that the, the early uh, the weekdays kind of ease you into it. So, you know, there's, there's fewer bands, there's fewer choices, and then you can kind of uh, you don't have to make the tough choices. And then you get to Friday and Saturday and there are just so many uh, options. And what I try to do is, is see the bands that I haven't seen before and try to find my new favorite band. Um, and always my favorite act are the, the acts that, I, that I have no idea who they are or what they're about and they go, you go into uh, their venue and they just blow you away. Okay, but some bands you have some knowledge of because they put you got them put on a special Mayor's Mix homegrown celebration CD. Yeah. In my last 30 seconds, tell me, if you will, who's on it? 
Oh man, I have I some of my favorite uh, artists. Um, obviously, my brother Jamie is on there in the Boom Chucks. Uh, we have Haley Bonner. We have uh, Trampled by Turtles, Charlie Parr, Low, uh, uh, T. Galexi, uh, Hobo Nephews, uh, All, right. All Right, All okay. Right, and, and and Toby Churchill as a solo as well. So yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm really proud of it and. It's, uh, I think folks will enjoy uh, hearing it. Is there a release party we should know about? No, no release party. I guess Homegrown is a release party, but uh, yeah, you'll be able to find it down at uh, Electric Fetus. I think we'll be selling them for five bucks. So. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much yeah. for being a part of this and supporting music in the arts in Duluth. Absolutely. Wonderful to have you. All right, well, the Homegrown Festival kicks off Sunday night with new band night at Pizza Luce. Our cameras will be on the scene capturing the music, and we'll share that with you next week on the playlist. For more details, and a full music schedule, you can visit the Duluth Homegrown website. Now, for several Duluth musicians, playing Homegrown is almost a given. Rich Matson is a regular fixture. He's a luminary in the Minnesota music scene, performing all over the state and recording and encouraging new talent at his studio on the Iron Range. Here's a taste of the Sparta Sound Studio, where his band, the Tisdales, meet to try out some new material. Let's go. Let's go. Tisdales is a rock and roll band, a loud rock and roll band with guitars. It just seems like it's fitting you know, that we're playing this loud rock and roll out here in the middle of nowhere um, in Sparta, Minnesota. Yeah, I grew up in, in West Dublin. My grandparents bought me a concertina when I was about five or six. And I took concertina lessons, and and then and then I remember the Partridge family came around, and they're like, I want a bass, I, I want to be a bass player. It's only got four strings; it can't be that hard. And, and I remember I got a bass for Christmas in 1981. And from then on, I was in bands. I'm Rich Matson. I'm a guitar player and a singer and a songwriter and a recording enthusiast. Can I hear the uh, second rack, Tom? You know, that I started doing it just for my own band and, and for my friends' bands. And it just kind of evolved from there. You know, word got around and, and when I lived in the cities, I hung out at the music clubs and I met a lot of bands. And then I started running live sound and I met more bands that way and I started telling them about my studio and Rich is great to work with. I think Rich lets the musicians, you know, kinda do their thing and he speaks up when he has to and I think I think that second rack Tom needs a little a little work. I think a lot of the music that comes out of here is, you know, it really represents the, the musicians that are playing. And uh that's a, you know, a testament to Rich. I really enjoy recording a band that's it's their first time in the studio. You know, I try to make everybody really comfortable. I try to make it so that they can hear themselves really well if they're wearing the headphones and, and let them know that they can be themselves around here. When they're out there playing, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm listening like full on, you know, and they got my complete attention. I'm, really, I'm listening for mistakes, I'm listening for something that, that sounds amazing, you know. There was a guy that recorded here one time. He goes, well, we're going to try and capture lightning in a bottle. And I, I think that's that's kind of the essence of it, you know, just when you can capture that lightning in a bottle, you know, and hear it played back. And, yeah, it sounds really good. It's, I don't know, I just love it.
Tisdale's played the Saturday of Homegrown, and they'll be re releasing a new CD later this year. Now, for more information on the playlist, our arts calendar, links and such, please visit our website at theplaylistonline.org. The artwork in our studio tonight comes from Cherie Hamilton and Tanya Borgeson. They'll have their artwork on exhibit at the Washington Studio Galleries next month, along with work from six other art instructors from Lake Superior College. Now, the opening is Friday, May 6th from 6 to 8 p.m., and the show runs through May 29th. Well, thank you for joining us for this show tonight, Art, Music, Dance, and Theater. Those opportunities are all out there for you to enjoy. So have a great weekend, and remember to go out and support the arts. Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by viewers like you.